So here are the numbers from the Hurricane Center, right? Five to eight for the Tampa Bay area, including Pinellas, eight to 12 up into Pasco, and then 10 to 15 for Citrus County. Now look at the storm surge forecast. These are the forecast numbers and the record. So Cedar Key, that's up north, right? Thinking about 11 foot. Now these numbers here are on the top end. So let's let's go to Clearwater. The last, the, the highest one that we saw back in that storm of 93, the no name storm, four feet. The top end is eight feet. So even if we got to just five feet at Clearwater Beach, we haven't seen that since 1993. That's why this is a big deal. OK, let me get out of the way here so you can read this a little bit better. Port Manatee, right? That's down on the southern side of the bay in, in Manatee County. Last time we had a high water was was actually last year, four feet less than that, right? A little more than three and a half. The bottom level we could see is about four, which would be more than that, right? Which is more than the record. And we could go up to almost seven, seven and a half feet. Downtown St. Pete, this is just, the actual sensor there is just south of downtown by the airport there. 3.97 back in 85, that was in August of 85, that was Hurricane Elena. That stayed offshore, it did a little loop-de-loop -loop just off our coast and then went back towards the west-northwest. That gave us almost four feet. The forecast for St. Pete is five to eight. So again, that 8.2 is the very top end of the forecast, but just seeing five foot would still set a record there. Old Port, this is up in the bay, up in uh, downtown Tampa area. The last time we saw the highest water was last year, it was four feet. We could double that. I don't think we quite double that, but I certainly think almost every one of these records goes. And today, tonight, we will set new records. That's why this is pretty serious. Now, this will come up very quickly, but it will take time to come down. Idalia, two to four foot, came up, went down. This will not be the case. It will come up quickly. It will slowly come down through the overnight hours. So let me show you this right here. This is data that we get from the National Hurricane Center, and you see all these colors here. These are from the model that says the areas that they think could, it's called potential storm surge, could flood, okay? And so I wanna go here, I'm gonna take some time here, guys, in the booth, if you don't mind. Look at the reds and the oranges, because those are generally the lowest areas. Most of what you see in red here, I would expect easily to be flooded tonight, okay? And then a lot of the orange will have water. The yellows, the blues, that's tougher, but that's literally the Hurricane Center running a model saying like, yeah, we could get water almost up to Progress Village there just west of 75, okay? Look at West Shore. That's West Shore and Gandy right there, right? That is likely to flood. Obviously, the south end of McDill, that's real low. We expect that. This is Bayshore. Look at Bayshore at TGH. It's right in this area, right in here. Bayshore coming around. That is likely to flood. The west side, you get up here. This is, uh, um, what's the beach there over there? It's always, it's always got dirty water. It's always got the uh, warning for that. Ben Davis. Davis. Yeah, where Eric Glasser was earlier. That's it, Benty Davis. There's the airport, right? Part of that could actually see some flooding. Um, that's Howard Franklin Bridge. Obviously, the bridge is high enough, but the side of the bridge is not. Now, let's get over here to Shore Acres. Feather Sound is right up here behind the banner, but you get the, it's the same thing. There is 70, 275. Fourth Street is that yellow line right there. So, does it get all the way to Fourth Street? I don't think so, but there is the potential. But certainly, that old northeast area, uh, it's a little bit further. That's down in here. Most of that's elevated, especially around 4th Street. That's not an issue. But when you get up in that Shore Acres area and, and northward towards Gandy, that's going to flood. Now, South St. Pete, right there along the water where you expect it, we'll see the water. But inland, just a little bit. Now, let's get out to the beaches. Look at this. Tierra Verde, right? That Most of that area is likely to flood. Boca Ciega, get up to Reddington Shores. Now, on the beaches, a lot of the beaches are lower on the back side on the intercoastal side, all right? Those areas have a better chance of getting water versus the beachfront and Gulf Boulevard. If we get water on Gulf Boulevard for most of our cameras, or for most of our uh, locations, if water goes up to Gulf Boulevard, which some of them do, you're gonna get a lot of water, all right? In fact, we've got a live camera, is that what you're just saying now? There's Gulf Port. Okay, so this is Gulf Port, right? That is uh, a uh, rain band coming through, right? 
so the winds are picking up. They're supposed to, but even when the rain bands come through, you get even higher winds. They'll actually come down a little bit, but just looking at this and knowing where that camera is, that is still a south southeast wind and that wind's going to change a little bit. And when it changes, we'll get more water. It's starting to pile up there over in the road. This is from the old casino right on top of the old casino looking off towards the east northeast right there. And that uh, well, the sailboats that you see the two of them up against the the, the wall right there. They've been there. There is a new one in the mix over there that wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, and so we've already started to see some of the damage with that. And this just will continue to get windier. And I think it really gets going here, obviously, in the next hour. But then through about 930, 1030 tonight, then it will start to come down uh, just a little bit. All right, now back over to our map here. Let's get up to Indian Rocks Beach. See the front of the beach is actually not terrible. The backside is. Bel Air Bluffs, you, that's not an issue. It's very high, but there are some spots right there. Most area aren't there. Here's Feather Sound now. You can see that, okay? There's basically where you're heading out off due west, uh, coming off the Howard Franklin Bridge. This area right here, the Bayside Bridge is right here. You've got St. Pete Clearwater Airport right there. Obviously, they're going to have some issues, uh, uh, potentially even on the runway. They're going to have to watch that. And then you get back out to Clearwater Beach. And, and you know, initially we were thinking Clearwater is going to be fine, but there will be some water, especially around the back side of the island. So if you live there with the docks in the back, Oh, it's going to be very close. A lot of the houses themselves are built up a little bit, but the overall elevation, say, in between the houses and things like that could get some water. Now, Oldsmar, we're not, we, we are used to getting water. Ari Olds Park is there because that's where we're going to get a lot of water. But this is the Oldsmar area right in here. That will certainly flood. It has the potential to get up the Tampa Road in Oldsmar. I don't think that happens, but it'll be close. I do think it happens when you get east of Racetrack. That's Racetrack Road right there. East of there, uh, you're basically looking at the creek, which really just allows a lot of water up. That will likely get shut down at some point, probably after sunset, 7.30, 8.30, that time frame. I think by that time, the water level's up. So this is Tampa Road, or it's called Hillsborough Avenue, all the way down to Rocky Point. Most of those areas are going to get water. Now, look, as I mentioned, if you live in one of these right here and you've got the house on the water with the dock, uh, doesn't necessarily mean your house is going to get water and it depends on how it's built up because I know a lot of those houses are fairly built up, but some aren't and, and that's going to be a little bit more of an issue. Now let's get up towards well honeymoon. Don't worry about that. Dunedin. Dunedin's going to be interesting because certainly the marina there is going to have water, but if you've ever been there, you kind of go uphill as you're walking from the intracoastal back into downtown Dunedin. That area up right up until you get up to old US 19, I think is going to have some water. It's going to be very, very close uh, to seeing that. Now, Tarpon Springs just saw a live report out there right now. They're like, well, Tarpon Springs actually used to seeing water. But again, guys, this is not something that I've ever seen. I've been here 16 years and never seen this, right? You have to go back decades before you see some of the levels that we could see tonight. Uh, Newport Ritchie, there's US 19. See that? That red area, very good chance that we get flooding in that area. Hey, Bobby. Yeah. As you're talking about, you know, we're, the timing of when we're going to get this, when is it going to go away? Yeah, after midnight. After it midnight. Slowly we'll coming down. Yeah. So I'm thinking that peak is going to be closer to about 9 through about 10, 11 o'clock p.m. tonight, and then slowly coming down. Um, it's all about the wind driving it, but the tide's coming up. Guys, the tide's at uh, high tide, 2.15, 2 2.19 in the morning. So the wind will be coming down, and it'll try and let the water back out. But the tide's coming back out. Some of it will come back down, but it, it's not going to be a whole lot. So that's, that's why it's a slower release of that water back out. Okay, Jasmine Estates, look at how all red it is just west of US 19. Hudson, mainly west of there too. Uh, the the no-name storm back in 93, right? It was a squall line of thunderstorms that came in here. That pushed water all the way up to US 19. This has the potential to do that, right? We That was not forecast in 1993. It just happened, and you can't imagine how crazy that was. You also can't imagine how much else has been built here since then. All right, so there is a lot of property, a lot of real estate here that's going to have to watch for the water. Let's move up past Hernando Beach. This is Homosassa. Obviously, Homosassa, you, you know the drill, right? You're going to get some water. Sugar Mill Woods, though, you're east of 19. This turns into 98, but I think most of Sugar Mill Woods, a big neighborhood, is, is going to be fine, but that western side out by 19 is going to have some water. Then you get into Crystal River. This is 98, uh, again, U.S. 1998. I, I was looking at some data this week that suggested potentially two to four feet of water on the road there 
in, in 98, and it actually could be a little bit higher. And if you even think back even to Adalia, we had a live crew out there during Adalia, and there's watch, literally while we were watching them, you could see the water coming up. It came up like that. That's going to happen there. They are closer to the higher winds. There'll be higher winds blowing in out of the southwest here than what we will see down in the Tampa Bay, the immediate metro area. And so they get not only more surge because of that, but it's super flat out here. It's hard to even take sailboats in and out of there, right? So that is another factor that they'll have to deal with. Now look, the biggest surge is going to be up here in the Big Bend area. I think Perry is like right in this area here. I think that's where the center might actually go. Notice if you've got interest back up here, notice how we don't have much surge here. And that's simply because you've got the counterclockwise flow, right? It's pushing wind in here on the east side of the eye. And then on the back side of the eye, it's actually blowing water out. So that's again, this is just a model. This is from the Hurricane Center. This is their thought about what could happen. I don't think we get as much as what I showed you there. That's why I kind of focused on those red areas and red right up to the orange because those are the lowest areas.